Hello, and welcome to tonight's Echo Hawk for Seattle Town Hall for the Admiral neighborhood. My name is Nick, and I use he, him, or they, them pronouns, and I'll be the moderator for tonight. Before we get started, I want to introduce Leal and Zoe and invite them to unmute and welcome us into this space. Hi, my name is Zoe, and this is my auntie, Leal Echo Hawk, and we like to welcome you to my family. Hi everyone, my name is Leal Echohawk. I'm a member of the Pawnee Nation of Oklahoma and um, an adopted granddaughter to Katie John of the Upper Atma Athabascan people from, Alaska, from the interior of Alaska. And I'm excited to be here uh, with Zoe to welcome you folks to uh, the West Seattle Admiral Town Hall. Um, our family is, um, has been in Seattle for some time. I live in DC now, but before I moved to DC, I lived on Southwest Genesee in West Seattle and um, really um, miss um, the West Seattle area. Um, super excited to be here to welcome you guys. Um, our family, one of the things that we talk about um, a lot is that we're all different. Uh, West Seattle issues are different than North Seattle issues um, in some respects. Um, our family, we're all different. I'm an attorney. My, one of our sisters is chef. Colleen is running from there. Um, but we all love um, our family and our communities, and we want to do the best for them. 
And that's really um, been sort of the, the guidepost here in, in the campaign um, from Colleen and also for our family, want to make sure that, um, that we do the best for Seattle. So we're excited to be here. Um, I'm happy to be here with Bill. And um, have a, we look forward to learning more from you and, and what's going on and what your concerns are and what you're looking for um, from Colleen as the next Seattle mayor. So thanks. Thank you so much, Lael and Zoe, for that lovely welcome. The agenda, the agenda for tonight's town hall will consist of the following items. First, we'll hear a bit from Colleen about her background and why she's running for mayor. And then we'll have an open Q&A session where we encourage your active participation. Tonight is an opportunity for you all to get to speak with Colleen and ask her questions, as well as share your thoughts about what your neighborhood needs. I'll go over all the ways to submit your questions shortly, but first, let's hear a bit from Colleen. Thank you so much, Nick, for your gracious hosting tonight. And um, much love and appreciation to Lael and Zoe for supporting us this evening, for welcoming, up, welcoming us into this space and, and really setting the tone because what this campaign is about, what our family is about, is putting our community first by stepping up to the plate when there is a need, by stepping up to the plate when there is community that is hurting, um, stepping up to the plate when you see that you could be, um, uh, you could help bring some good answers to the community. So that's what this campaign is about. We're putting people first and recognizing that this is time for generational change, a generational shift is, is happening. So, so grateful for um, the support of um, the community that's come together to support this town hall. West Seattle is um, a really important area. We know it is an area that um, is experiencing some difficulties right now with the West Seattle Bridge um, being uh, down right now. Um, I know that I drove over there the other day to meet a friend from North Seattle and it took 42 minutes. Minutes. I timed it because I was really curious. And that was like at 730 at night. So that's a huge concern to me. Um, I believe that part of the role of a mayor, of an, of an, of an, of an you know, a, a leader of an organization, you care about access, you care about infrastructure. And so it, it pains me greatly um, that um, West Seattle is struggling in this way. And looking forward to as mayor um, to be uh, one, fixing that bridge and two, um, finding alternate ways to get people back and forth from West Seattle. There's There are options out there that are things we should be working on and doing. So I look forward to um, talking more about that. But before we do, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself and the reason I'm running for mayor of Seattle right now. Um, I was born and raised in a little rural Alaska town called Delta Junction. I have seven siblings. <laughs> you saw one of them just a minute ago, Lael. Um, my family ran a small motel. I grew up in small business. Um, I saw the impact of small business on my family. And this little motel was like the, the heartbeat of our um, family. I grew up cleaning rooms and working the front desk and um, really saw what a small business can do for a family. I also have some amazing leaders in my family that I look up to as, um, as just visionaries in, in the community. My uncle John started the Native American Rights Fund over 50 years ago now. My uncle Larry was a Democratic Attorney General in Idaho. And I'm most proud of my grandmother, Katie John from the Copper River area, Metasta Lake. She fought a 30 year legal battle for subsistence fishing and hunting rights and the federal courts. She won it in a landmark decision. I got to witness that. I got to see her tenacity and her fierceness for her community. And I'm sharing this with you because I want you to know that our family is no stranger to tough fights. I want to tell you why I'm stepping forward to run for mayor. I'm running because right now Seattle has some huge challenges, but we also have the potential to turn it around. Like I mentioned er earlier, this is time for generational change. And we confront many serious problems. There's many serious things ahead of us. Police accountability, how we recover from COVID and the urgency of climate change. But I believe the crisis we have to immediately tackle is the homeless emergency. You know, the election this year will be on November 2nd. 
six years ago to the day on November 2nd, 2015, I remember sitting on my couch watching King Five News and seeing the mayor, the city council, the executive of King County declaring a state of emergency over homelessness. But it was like they pulled the fire alarm but didn't send the fire trucks. And since then, there's been so much finger pointing and infighting and the culture in City Hall has become toxic. And we have more of our neighbors experiencing homelessness than ever before. The status quo isn't working. Tonight, we will have three to 4,000 people sleeping outside, sleeping outside. That is a humanitarian crisis. That is something that burdens the heart of Seattle. I hear it all over. We're so worried and concerned about those relatives who are sleeping outside. We know we can do better. We're frustrated. We're angry that we can't do it. That we're not doing a better job. So what do we do? Day one of an Echo Hawk administration starts with an emergency housing program. The goal is really simple. We find warm and dry and safe places for everyone to sleep at night. That means an all of the above approach, no more shelter space, hotel rooms, RVs, campgrounds, and other really amazing community-led solutions. I believe that there should be no sweeps until there's a place to sleep. It makes zero sense to remove encampments until there's that warm and dry and safe place to move people to. I know from personal experience, if there is a better option, 98% of people experiencing homelessness will take it. We just have to discover what that better option is and provide it. And as soon as we have a place for people to go, we end the practice of allowing people to camp in city parks and public right of ways. So how do we do all this? How do we succeed where there's been so much failure? First, we have to put the past behind us. No enemies, no grudges. We start fresh and we treat this like the emergency it is. After the election, I'll use the transition period to bring all parts of our community together, government, business, higher ed, the philanthropic community and residents. We all live in Seattle and we're in this together. The day I get sworn in, we'll hit the ground running with the plan. And this will be my top priority as mayor. I believe my life experience has uniquely prepared me to meet this moment in our city's history. Seven years ago, I became the head of Chief Seattle Club. We support urban native people who are experiencing homelessness. In Seattle, we feed people, we operate a day shelter, and provide ways to reconnect with cult tribal culture, identity, spirituality. It's an amazing place. And in the last few years, we started to build housing. We've had some really amazing successes. We're opening 80 studio units this October and another 125 units next June and another 200 units are in the pipeline. We also opened a really amazing place called Eagle Village. Uh, we worked with King County to put surplus trailers on an unused parking lot in Soto. It's called Eagle Village. It's a success. It shows what can happen when we think creatively, we work together. Chief Seattle Club has been a hub of housing for the community. We have the highest housing retention rates in the region. That means when people pl get placed in housing, that they stay there. I am so tired of the status quo, having good solutions, knowing other people that have good solutions, but we're not heard. The bureaucracy has become so heavy with no willingness to try new things and new approaches. We know it's hard. I have been doing hard things every single day. I can continue to grind out limited victories or I can do something else that's very hard, run for mayor and bring the strategies that we know that work to the city and make generational change. I do this work because we can make a difference. I, will, I hope all of you out there listening tonight, there is hope ahead of us. There are solutions ahead of us. And I'm running for mayor because after seven years of doing homeless work in the city, it has taught me that with the right leadership, we can make a difference on a much larger scale. The first step in any transformational change is listening to people. And that's what we're doing tonight. We are listening to you. I wanna hear your ideas, the things that you are thinking about, answer all the questions, but also know that we can have a dialogue. We've been doing this um, in, we're gonna do it in 40 neighborhoods. Um, but we're almost to 20 um, and it has been just a wonderful experience to hear from our neighborhoods. I, um, called a lot of folks when I decided to run for, for mayor, you know, getting advice from my community, um, thoughts from the elders that um, know me. And um, one of them was my uncle Fred John. He's known me since I was a baby. 
Um, he's known me my whole life. And I told him what I was thinking about. And he said, absolutely, Colleen, you have to run for mayor. And then he said, Colleen, there's no word in the Athabascan language for leader. In our language, the word for leader is a servant because the leader is a person that serves everyone in the tribe. It's their job to make sure that the young people and the old people and sick people are taken care of. I'm running for office to be that servant, to be a new generation of leadership for this community that I love so much. So thank you all for being here tonight. I look forward to your questions, to your comments, um, and being in dialogue with you. This is um, such a wonderful time for our city. We, are, we have such opportunities ahead of us, and um, I look forward to solving them with you. So um, thank you so much, and I'll pass it back to you, Nick. Thank you so much, Colleen. Now we're gonna to shift to the Q&A portion of our program. There are many ways to share your thoughts and questions with our team, and we'll try to get through as many questions as possible tonight. If you've joined us on Zoom, please raise your hand so we can call on you. You can find the raise hand button under reactions in your bottom Zoom toolbar. If you prefer to type your question, you can enter it in the chat. For those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube, we have volunteers monitoring those comment sections for questions. And if you prefer to tweet, please use the hashtag #EchoHawkTownHall. To kick off our Q&A, we'd like to first thank your neighborhood captain, Conrad Popoletti, for getting the word out for this event. Conrad, would you please unmute and ask the first question for us? Thanks, Nick, I'd love to. And thanks, Colleen, for taking time to chat with uh, folks in the Admiral area and along the West Seattle Peninsula tonight. Um, I have a question about getting a hospital to West Seattle. Um, as you may know, it's difficult for people in West Seattle to access healthcare services um, since the West Seattle Bridge is closed. Um, during emergencies, traditionally, people would go to the many hospitals on First Hill, um, but that's a lot less accessible um, with the bridge out. The city has actually been encouraging people to go south outside of the city limits to St. Anne Highline Medical Center. Um, but for people in the Admiral area, which is so far north on the peninsula, that's not really a good option because you can't get there quickly. Um, so I'm curious, um, what do you think um, you um, can do to help uh, get a hospital or a larger healthcare facility to open in West Seattle? Yeah. Well, Connor, number one, thank you so much for hosting and inviting people tonight. Um, it's so wonderful. Thank you for the support. Um, you know, and, and like I mentioned at the start of this, the West Seattle Bridge truly is a concern. Um, you know, if one thing, that, a lot of things were illuminated by COVID, but one thing that was very clear to me is the health inequities in our community. And I see the West Seattle Bridge access as being one of them. Um, as mayor, I can't, um, you know, wave a magic wand and, and, and start a new hospital over there um, as much as I'd like to. Um, however, there are, op there are opportunities ahead of us. Um, the, one of the things we will initiate once we um, get into office is a health equity committee. Um, and many of our, our leading um, experts <laughs> are gonna be on that committee. I've talked to several of them. Um, and, and we can be thoughtful about ways that we could approach this. We could work with King County Public Health, um, which the city participates with, um, and, and think about what we could be doing to um, support um, West Seattle and those folks who are, you know, kind of uh, stuck over there with the, with the bridge being out, there needs to be at least an emergency response. Um, and, and I know that we have um, wonderful fire out there, um, paramedics and EMTs, but um, there, I don't know if it's maybe expanding an urgent care site or doing something like that. I think that there is opportunity um, to be working with some of our local partners to make sure that that we have, um, you know, adequate at least something over there if someone's having a crisis and can drive themselves to an emergency room or an urgent care. Um, it's a really um, it's a really sad um, place we find ourselves in with that bridge. You know, one of the things that. I thought was important for me um, when I decided to run for mayor is to be talking to the folks who, you know, made the decision to, um, you know, fix the bridge for 15 years, you know, as a, a, a director of an organ of a nonprofit with, you know, several sites and vehicles and things like that, you, you, you generally want to fix the problem, you know, I mean, you know, for, for permanently, not just fix it temporarily. Um, but I, I really know, I know and trust those folks on that committee and heard from them that they felt like this was the right choice for us. And so I would follow that. But at the same time, I would be making the plans for us to um, pay for the new bridge. Um, 
and, and making sure that we are um, setting, setting ourselves up for, for success there um, and, and adequate um, access to West Seattle. Um, I think it's a, it's a shame that we've gotten to this point um, but as a leader of an, um, a, a currently a current leader of an organization and then a leader of the city, I believe it's a, that leader's job to um, ensure that the infrastructure is taken care of. And that means bridges, that means potholes, and that and that can mean, you know, making sure that there's adequate um, care for folks who are experiencing a health emergency. So thank you so much for bringing the question to my attention. It's one I've, I have um, thought a little bit about, and that I think our health um, equity community uh, committee would be um, looking at access and be looking at areas where there is not enough care. So, thank you so much, and um, I look forward to partnering with you on it once I'm in office. Of course, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. The next question comes from Martin Pagel on YouTube. Colleen, talking about new approaches, have you heard about the Skylink efforts to connect West Seattle with the transit network Sound Transit is building? What do you think about it? West Seattle has so many bitch, bridge and traffic issues. We need a solution this decade rather than next. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with the Skylink you said. Is that the, I'm not sure yes. if that's the other ST3 um, out to West Seattle. Is that what we're talking about? I haven't heard it called Skylink. So um, Mark, I'm sorry, I wanna make sure I answering, I'm answering that right. So um, we're gonna um, do a quick Google search on that, make sure that we answer it correctly. Um, and, um, but I will say, um, if we're talking about ST3, um, the West Seattle um, out to Ballard, um, I, 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 I was um, on that committee for a while um, to think about how um, that, how, how uh, where ST3 should run. Um, so I'm very familiar with the project and um, uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful about um, light rail. I know that in my neighborhood, we're about to get light rail and I think it's going to be life changing for me and my family. Okay, we're talking about the gondola. I have heard about the gondola. Um, I think it's interesting. You know, I, I um, know that Portland has used gondolas. Other cities are using those as well. Um, it's I am. I am the kind of leader that is open to ideas. If there are effective ideas, if there are ideas that, that, that we can see will make positive solutions for our community, then I'm very open to them um, and we'll want to implement them. I, I, have, I don't have the, enough knowledge about the gondola. Um, it's something we can like look into, the West Seattle Sky Link, um, because I think that we have to be offering alternatives to our community, giving them access to downtown, access to hospitals like we were just talking about um, and um, infrastructure and transportation are just a big um, passion of mine. Um, in 2018, my family and I went to Japan and we were on public transit the whole time. The system worked so beautifully. Uh, and, and, you know, with, with the crisis of um, climate change ahead of us and, and, and actually just bearing down on us, we have to become a city that, that becomes more, um, um, that public transportation becomes more accessible, more reliable, um, more um, lines of transit everywhere we can. So we can get people out of cars and into um, public transportation and cut down our emissions in the city. Um, that's something I'm, um, I know that we can do. I've seen it modeled in other cities. Um, and Tokyo is unbelievable how well you can get around on public transportation. And we took everything from bikes to trains to buses and streetcars. So um, we didn't take a gondola, but next, um, but you know, who knows? And um, so thank you for bringing it up. Um, I will do a little bit more research into it, but I am excited about innovative ideas from the community and um, we'll, we'll see it happen. So thank you so much for the question. Thank you again, Martin. The next question comes from Jasmine Williams. With a lot of black and indigenous people of color families being displaced to other cities due to gentrification, there are resources that we used to have that are no longer available. What are your plans to, su to support displaced BIPOC families access connect to resources? Yeah, super important. You know, um, the Chief Seattle Club, 
Um, we have supported people all over King County. We've had people who come down from Tacoma to get our resources. And so it, it is something that um, I know is incredibly important because the Black community, Indigenous community have been um, displaced. Uh, I think that we have to think um, broadly around this around this um, question and, and, and recognize that even if um, a family member, a community member has uh, had to move to Renton or Skyway or uh, Everett, <laughs> Shoreline, um, that they still are a part of this family, that they are still a part of the community in Seattle. And um, we have to um, just recognize that and accept that and know that um, we can um, you know, be working to um, make sure services are accessible. Um, that is tough. There's a lot of a lot of um, issues there, but that's just just my that's just the way I have led and the way that I think we should be thinking about in our city. And 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 the other way I want to answer this is that we I want I want them I want to come I want you all to come back I want to come back like this well I I live in North Seattle but I want my family to come back the the opportunities are huge and the way that I can see this happening is by funding black and indigenous and people of color led organizations to build housing. I um, have been there, I have done it, and I have seen um, what kind of um, opportunity it brings because um, we know that there, there are, that there are um, folks out there who feel so connected to Seattle, feel like it's their home, but have been priced out we have to build affordable housing that works for our community, that is led by um, Black, Indigenous, people of color communities, um, because then we can use tools like affirmative marketing to bring back, um, to, to bring um, Black or Indigenous or people of color community back into Seattle. Um, there are some really successful models out there that have already been modeling this. And I would be looking towards funding other organizations like that so we can bring people back. The other policy we can begin to implement on a greater level is a community preference policy. Um, the Office um, for, uh, for Civil Rights has been working on this one for a while now. It's been, it's been also modeled in Portland and in Boston. And what this, what this policy does is if you can say, hey, my family has lived, for instance, in the Central District, district or in West Seattle. I know that there's been a lot of native families that have lived in West Seattle and Ballard for years that have been priced out. If you can show some by you know some form that your family had lived there, then you can get um, um, to the top of the list for any affordable housing that's being built. Um, that's a, a very um, interesting and innovative way to ensure that um, you know our community can come back to Seattle. Seattle cannot be a place that is only for the very wealthy. We have to become a place that is affordable to everyone. Um, and, and I'm passionate about that. I look forward to working with community to um, understand what that's going to mean for us. But it's time for us to, to have um, leadership in this space. It has been far too long that this has been allowed to happen. And um, I, 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 I can assure you, um, that this will be at the forefront of my mind as we move forward in the city. So thank you so much for the question. Thank you, Jasmine. The next question comes from Dana Lurie Paramore. What transit options would you suggest the city explore while the bridge repair is happening? Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm really interested in the um, water taxi. Um, I know that there is some um, um, some extended services, but I think that that could be a really interesting option. Um, I'm ex I'm interested in increasing um, greater um, bus access um, to West Seattle, making it easier for folks to um, access. Uh, Trans, um, public transportation through the bus system um, as we um, as we endure um, the fix on this bridge. Um, this is super um, necessary. Um, and I know that um, the Seattle Department of Transportation and other community groups have been working on this. I'll be looking for their leadership um, to know um, what the exact fixes should be. Um, but I would be a very active partner and um, leader in that space to make sure that those, um, those solutions are being implemented. So um, more water taxi, more buses, and other community-led innovations is, is my answer on that one. So thank you so much for the question. Thank you, Dana. The next question comes from 
Eleni Casey. Some city council members are supporting that 75% of the vehicle license fee be spent on bridges and only 25% for all the rest. For example, transportation maintenance, planning ahead, safe streets and sidewalks. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. I am not familiar with uh, the 75%, um, but I can tell you that, um, like I mentioned earlier, we have to look at the whole picture. We can't only look at just the bridges. Of course, bridges are important. It's not just West Seattle Bridge, but it's Magnolia Bridge and other bridges around um, our, our region. The, the, bridge, the bridges have become uh, incredibly important. I want to say an emergency. I don't know if it's quite an emergency, but it's it's at the, a, a breaking point and we have to do something better there. Um, so I would, as mayor, would be looking for um, a lot of federal funding to get us up and going. Um, I know that we um, now, as you all know, we have a friend in the White House um, at last, and I would be looking to partner with all of our, um, all of our, um, uh, federal partners, um, as well as our local partners. I'll be working with um, Senator Murray, Senator Cantwell, um, and find ways to uh, make sure that we are getting this funded. Um, it's and, and as I mentioned earlier, it's not just the bridge, but it's all of our infrastructure. Um, we can't um, only focus on just bridges and then not focus on, you know, um, highways that don't have, you know, huge potholes in them. Or um, another, another passion of mine is um, sidewalks. We don't, there are areas in Seattle that don't have any sidewalks. We know that we have had a tremendous amount of pedestrian deaths through COVID. And if we are going to get to, um, you know, uh, vision zero of no um, pedestrian deaths. We we need to um, work on our bike lanes. We need to work on our um, sidewalks. We need to work on our crosswalks. Um, and I'm, I'm bringing that up because I see it as a whole holistic picture um, and um, would be not, on, of course, looking for bridge funding, of course, looking for um, maintenance and infrastructure um, needs on the bridges, but also on all the other infrastructure needs we have in the city. So Thank you, Lonnie, so much for the question. Um, and I am excited about um, helping lead us forward. I have um, the experience that we need um, to understand how to um, make sure that these infrastructure um, needs are taken care of. So thank you so much for the question. Awesome. Um, the next question is, can you tell us about your experience working on police accountability efforts and what your goals would be as mayor? Yeah. Yeah, this is a this one is is really heavy and on all of us. Um, I have been the executive director of the Chief Seattle Club for the last seven years. Um, we support Native people who are experiencing homelessness. And when you advocate for some of the most disenfranchised, mar um, and marginalized, and also incredibly resilient people in our city, you deal with problems at Seattle's police department on a day to day basis. I also served on the Community Police Commission for four years. Um, I was the co-chair of the most recent chief of police search and um, was able to travel around the country and meet with police departments from, um, you know, from uh, Austin to Pittsburgh. And I can tell you um, that we have some significant issues with our police reform here in Seattle. Um, and we cannot look away. We have to have courage to face the truth. I can tell you that right now that as mayor, I would have zero tolerance for bad cops, zero tolerance. And you know, the mayor can, um, can enact this zero tolerance um, policy. I would have the responsibility of finding a chief of police who would stand up um, and, and take action and flip the tables and say, you know what? It doesn't matter if we have arbitration after us. We will fire bad cops. We will fire cops that, do, are, that are taking advantage of our community, who are dishonest, who are using excessive force, or have a, a history of biased policing. We will stand up against that. And, 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 and you know what, what happens right now is that a chief of police could fire um, a bad cop who has you know, been just harmful in the community. Um, but then that can go to arbitration, an arbitration board. And often in our in our recent history here in Seattle, we've had um, those those um, firings have been turned over, and the and that um, police officer has come back into our Seattle Police Department system, and um, and then their chief of police is kind of you know 
is, you know, has, hasn't been able to like hold on to that, um, that firing. And the next time there's another cop who does something like that, then they're less likely to, to fire them. I will hire a chief of police who will turn that, who will flip that table and will not allow um, for that to happen. We will litigate it and we will litigate it and we will litigate it um, as long as we have to. And if it comes back to us, then I will um, work with that chief of police to make sure that those bad cops, they can go into, you know, the bad cop room somewhere in Seattle Police Department, but they will not be working with the public. Um, and, and we cannot be afraid to discipline officers who have violated rights of our community and our people. And, and that is um, just something that we have to have um, focus on and be sure that we are, um, that we are moving and, and doing that. Um, and I will tell you, it will be difficult. <laughs> so far, the Seattle Police Guild has shown little interest in accepting reforms. The 2018 police contract rolled back many of the reforms we put in place. Um, I stood with the Community Police Commission to reject the um, contract, um, but um, sadly, um, our city council voted on it, our mayor pushed it forward, and um, we have a contract that is not working in our favor. Um, my administration will strengthen the role of civilians in our accountability system. We have to ensure fair and just review of the actions of police officers. We will um, go back to neighborhood focused public safety um, that prioritizes healing and well being over conflict and punishment when it comes to situations of mental health and addiction. We will send in actual mental health providers and not armed officers. We will send in um, you know, social workers to work with our homeless community and not armed officers. We will, when someone is experiencing you know, um, a mental health crisis, and you know, let's just be honest, COVID has really pushed a lot of us into some, you know, mental health is, is strained right now. A lot of us are, uh, it's hard. Um, and we will, we will send in mental health workers that will, that will actually deal with the issue and not armed officers. Um, finally, I said, we will strengthen the Seattle, Seattle Community Police Commission. We have had some, in, and the Seattle Community Police Commission has some incredible advocates and, um, and, and fierce warriors who have fought hard um, to ensure that we have true reform in our city, um, but they have not had the power that they need, um, that we need. I'm still on that community police commission. So um, the community police commission, um, I will have monthly meetings with the chief and command staff to review data and, and, and investigations on use of force and bias policing. I will be meeting with them, having an active role and listening to the community to ensure that we are um, that we are truly having um, oversight and accountability. So this is um, something that is one of the most important issues in our city. I think it goes homelessness and then police reform. We have to have the courage to change. Thank you so much. And just a brief follow up from Martin on YouTube. Uh, what's your approach to the police union? And I know you touched on this in your last answer. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, well, let me just say that as, um, you know, an, a leader in the city for a while, I'm always open to talking and hearing from, from people. You know, I would, I would sit down with them and, and want to hear what's going on and in ways, it, it, what, what are, are there any common ground that we can move forward on? Um, that is my commitment as a leader, as a human being. I think we have to listen to each other, just like we're doing in these town halls right now, and, um, and try to find some common ground. Um, but I will, I, I, I will say, though, that accountability is at the forefront of my mind. Let's keep in mind that right now, we know that there were six officers that were um, um, a part of the Trump insurrection. They went to DC. Um, the Office of Police Accountability has been investigating these officers. We haven't had an update yet. Um, and it's been, you know, what, three, four months now um, since the insurrection. Um, the Seattle Police Officers, Gu officers Guild is protecting them. I, I don't think that is okay. I want to know what happened. I want to um, be able to understand if we, if we have police officers that were there and participated um, in that insurrection, I, I don't want them on our streets of Seattle. I don't. 
And, and we just have to, I just want to be clear about that. And um, I'm, I'm always willing to work and listen, but if you are behaving in ways that harm our community, then I'm not here for that. And we will, we will hold um, Seattle Police Department accountable. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, the Thank next you, question, man. yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> the next question comes from Lael. West Seattle residents can get an emergency pass to use the lower bridge. However, the applications are only being accepted one day a month. What will you do to improve the services the city provides to its residents? Accessibility is one of the things that I feel is so important, not just for this issue, but for many issues in our city. We know, um, for uh, here, here's an example. I know that um, the PPE and the um, and uh, the 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 city um, funded uh, grants for small business. Um, a lot of our community couldn't access that. Um, there wasn't enough outreach. There wasn't enough um, under you know if you're if English is not your first language. There wasn't enough translation. There was so many issues. There wasn't community outreach and engagement. So um, to answer this specific question, I I don't I I don't know why it's only open one day a month. Um, but I would want to streamline that service. I would want to make sure that it's accessible to everyone, um, that you can submit it um, throughout the month. Um, and, and I also would want to investigate it. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of curious, like, why um, that is. Um, maybe there's some reason that we don't know of. Um, but um, I don't think that is um, equity to only have it open one day um, a, a month. You know, what if you're... Um, you know, a single mom and you have to work that day that it's open and you can't get online. Um, I'm assuming it's probably online that you submit it or you don't have access to broadband, um, to Wi-Fi or you don't have um, a phone. I mean, there's so many issues to have it only open one day a, a month just in my mind is not equitable. I will lead with a lens of equity and racial justice. That is the way I lead. That's the way I am in this. That's the way I show up in this world. Um, so that's a great question. Um, and I'm so curious about what's going on there. But as mayor, I would make sure that we um, make that process equitable. I am also curious. Maybe we will um, learn <laughs> before the end of tonight. Um, the next question comes from Dana Lurie Paramore again. And she asks, or they ask, um, residents of Admiral have been trying to get a dog park further north in West Seattle, especially now that the main road to West Crest is a main artery out of West Seattle with the bridge out. Is another West Seattle dog park something your administration would consider? Well, let me say, Dana, that I love dogs. We got a COVID puppy um, and it's been life-changing and one of the most, the best decisions I've made. Um, um, Rizzo is her name and it's just been wonderful. Um, I couldn't, you know, this is something that um, we'd want to do some investigation on. However, I will tell you that dog parts Dog parks, I think, are wonderful for our community. Um, it's one, one, we get our dogs out, especially if, and you know, we, I believe that we have to build more apartments um, and we have to change our zoning laws and we have to have more density in our city. Um, that means that we have to have good parks and that we have to have places for people to take their dogs. Um, so that's something I'm very interested in supporting. You know, I don't know what the, the real estate landscape is over there in West Seattle. I imagine it's pretty tight. I know it is tight. Um, so that, that's, a, that's something I, I can't promise, but I can tell you that um, this is something that I, I care trem tremendously about um, and um, would look forward to you know, you know, seeing you at that dog park. The other thing about dog park, it, it, dog parks, is it really brings people together. Um, you know, your dog's off running around, and you can talk to a neighbor, and you can, you know, um, try to separate your dogs when they start having a little dog fight. <laughs> and there's ways to get to know each other. Um, community um, is super um, important for me. So um, I can't promise anything, of course, but it's definitely something that I'm interested in. And I hope you can hear my um, my value system around dog parks. So thank you so much for that question. That was such a fun one to answer. I love dogs. I just want, I keep telling my husband when I reti we retire, I want to have four dogs. That's all, that's all I really know about retirement is having four dogs. <laughs> he doesn't like that idea yet. I'll get him there. I keep telling my partner the only reason I, uh, you know, went to graduate school is just so that I could get more dogs. <laughs> the next question 
uh, comes from Rachel in the Zoom chat. She, um, they want to know, what is your plan to address aging infrastructure around the city? Yeah, absolutely important question. It is, it is like one of the questions we hear uh, through these town halls over and over again, because we know that it's severely imp impacting our community. And so the number one thing I will say is that we need to have shovel ready projects. Um, I know that, that um, the city government is working on that right now right now, um, but we now have a friend in the White House, as I said earlier, and the infrastructure packages are coming out. Um, the American Rescue Plan is coming out. We need to be ready. Um, and we have a huge backlog of maintenance that must be addressed. One of the things that I will do upon um, uh, becoming our mayor is to ask for an audit of that. I want to I want to personally see what they are. Um, as a leader of a nonprofit, as I mentioned earlier, um, Part of your job is to make sure that things work so that you can get the work done. And so um, that'll be something that is um, very, very um, top of the list for um, the, Echo, the Echo Hawk administration. So um, we know that um, we have uh, friends at, um, uh, at, at the local, um, local and state government as well. I would wanna work with Governor Inslee on his infrastructure plan. And I can tell you that, um, I believe that a leader of this city, the mayor, should care, should um, recognize, should should be should know the city, should understand, you know, that out in um, in in the neighborhoods that there are needs, and um, that is something I care about. I care about being a good leader. I care about um, making sure that the people that I'm caring for that their needs are met. And so it's just um, something that's top of mind for me. Um, I would be um, if I'm so lucky to be the mayor of the city. Um, I look forward to working with community and, and ensuring that we are we are dealing with our aging infrastructure. It really is true, and this is the time um, to, to do it. And I look forward to getting have that opportunity. So thank you so much for the question. Thank you, Rachel. We're uh, reaching the end of our time allotted for questions this evening. However, if we haven't gotten to your question or if you have additional comments for Colleen, please, please, please feel free to email the campaign at any time. Uh, we want to hear your ideas. You can email uh, the campaign at info at echohawk4seattle.com. Again, that's info at echohawk4seattle.com. And someone from the campaign will reach out to you. Our volunteers will also post that email in the comments for you. Um, since we're near the end of our time together, Colleen, do you have any final words? I am just so grateful to have this opportunity to be with you all today. Um, this is, our, our campaign is just, doing so well. Thank you for the support. It, I, you know, we hit the voucher um, cap today. We've raised over $400,000 now. Um, and I look at the names on, on that list and I am like just so moved. There's so many people in the city who, who have sent us their vouchers and said, we believe in this campaign. We believe that this is a time for um, a generational shift, a change um, in this city. So I'm so excited and grateful. I wanna invite you all to be a part of this campaign. We have over 250 volunteers who have um, signed up to work with us. Um, we're holding what we're called the Echo Hawk Flock meeting tomorrow night. Um, and that's for our volunteers. Um, and um, I'm, it just, I, I seriously am overwhelmed when I look at this. I want to be um, that servant leader who puts the needs of our community first, who lifts, lifts up the most vulnerable, who invites all of us into the story of justice um, that we all wanna be a part of. So thank you all for um, being here with us tonight. Thank you, Nick, for your hosting. I appreciate you so much. Ashley, Conrad, Cheryl, Lael, Zoe, I love you all. And I'm so delighted to get to spend this time with you. So thank you so much and have a wonderful night. Mm -hmm.